Okay guys, what's up? So, it's been like three months since I did a video. Finally doing another one. Guys, I've been trying to put some videos out, but I just don't want to put them out yet without testing what I'm saying. And this is one thing that I have tested and it's proven itself, at least for me, that works. And I, I really want to, I'm going to go ahead and show this to you guys. Got a lot of people want to see it, so here we're going to go. This, what you're looking at here, is one of my composite fiberglass bank poles and the wind is getting bad holy crap I swear every time I want to film the wind wants to get bad or somebody wants me to do anything anyway this is a fiberglass bank pole in our words you use this for catfish just like a limb line except you this is the limb itself this right here is actually made of two four foot fiberglass poles and about six to eight inches worth a half inch pipe pretty easy to build really durable guys I've actually hooked I've actually hooked about a 80 pound alligator snapper turtle one of these had it bend it sit at this angle in the water come bend it completely down to about a foot and it still worked great so this is what we're gonna make we're gonna make it for probably ten dollars per five if you already have the poles, that's something you're not going to need to buy. If you already have the pipe, it's not something you need to buy. You can substitute, do whatever you want, but this is just the way I'm going to show it. So, uh, here we go. Okay, everybody. So, to make these work, do them the way I'm doing them right now, this is basically all you need. You're going to need two of these four-foot fiberglass half-inch poles. You can get these at Tractor Supply. Pretty cheap. They're like $1.39 for these right here. They're half-inch fiberglass these are solid fiberglass too guys they're not like fishing rods where it's just like um fiberglass wrapped around in a cone these are legit fiberglass so we're gonna need two of those four foot or six foot whatever you can get whatever you want uh you're gonna need some cheap spray paint as you see i already spray painted these up just to break out the outline it really helps if you have a lot of people in your area so johnny sneakum doesn't come in uh take your catfish from you or whatever you're fishing for um, you're going to need a knife, fillet knife, scissors, whatever uh, you're going to need your pipe now the pipe you want to use is this is half inch pipe I think I got all this at tractor supply for um I got all this for like less than twenty dollars you want your pipe to be able to fit over your uh, your fiberglass poles and you want it to have some effort to actually go in there so it should when it go in there, it should be able to fit with a little effort and it should be nice and snugly when it goes on. So, you're going to need about 8 inches total per pole. And I think 4 foot of this is like $3.99. I had the receipt, but I bought all this like a month ago. Um, you're going to need lock washers. Now, this part of it is actually fairly... Um, you don't need to do it, but I'll do it because it's a lot easier for me. Uh, these are half inch lock washers, zinc, um, you can use nuts, um, there's a lot of different connection points I'll show you, but I like using the lock washers. Snap swivels, I, I just use them because they're easy, they just make the whole system work better. Um, these are Eagle Claw, these are size ones, and the ones you're going to want to get, you want to get them with this, um, they're kind of bent right there. That's just going to help it if a fish comes and a real one, a real big one. These aren't going to like just bend out super easy. Not saying they won't, but not as hard. You want to need your line or whatever. You can use whatever the heck you want. I'm using this is like number nine, um, number nine size bank line. You, I bought this from um, where did I buy this from? I buy from where I get all my net make supplies from um. Fishnet Company, that's where I got it. Fishnet Company of Louisiana, they sell this in about a one pound roll for about $13. And there's like, I think 2,000 feet per roll. So this is going to last you a lot. This is about 80 something pound breaking strength. More than enough than you're going to need for most stuff. You can buy the Walmart stuff if you want, but I like this small diameter because I'm really going for larger bullheads, if anything. Uh, you're going to need some fluorescent fighting tape. A uh, whole roll of this is like 200 feet, costs you like, I don't know, like a dollar, 
39 just about every hardware store mom and pop hardware store has it Lowe's has it they probably got bigger rolls get whatever size whatever color you want um, this is just to help you if you do like I do and you have your lines out while you're already fishing this helps you just spot them at night you can paint them glow in the dark if you want doesn't matter um, cool thing you can do with this is if you like running experiments um, one line could have pink one line could have white and the white could symbolize a kale hook or a different type of bait and the other one could symbolize a circle hook and a different type of bait or a line setup or a depth or whatever and you can also take a sharpie and write your um, address or whatever I just use trap tags and I just bend them around my pole so that's just me and then you're going to need a pool noodle again that part of it is kind of up to you I just like using it because of the system I found out for it. Um, gonna need all that. It all will help. You're definitely gonna need a. You don't need it, but a vice helps. Um, if you're gonna do the tip connection, you're gonna need a welder, welding helmet, of course. Don't want to bring your eyeballs out. Uh, angle grinder. Uh, you're gonna need an angle grinder. Um, what else? You need? You need a vice. Not advice, you need an anvil, something to hit on, and you're going to need a hammer. And also, I advise something to put over your mouth because when you cut this, the fiberglass dust, you don't want that in you. So, have like a bandana, face mask, something like that. But that's really all you need for this. Uh, you can do a lot simpler, you can just connect the two and just run them that way, or you can do all the fancy stuff I'm going to do. So, with all this being said, um, let me hook up the tripod and you know, we're actually going to get into it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, sorry the neighbors are over there. and they're, I have nosy neighbors, everybody. It seems like every time I want to film, they want to come out here and do something. So, anyway, I want to lower my voice. So, anyway, first thing we need to do is uh, make the connection points. We're going to need to make the coupler for the two poles. And the connection, if you want to do it that way, the connection for the uh, actual uh, line connection. So, uh, the way I do the line connection, since it's already cut like this, is I take a pair of big bolt cutters and on one section of the pipe I just snip it like so. So I get this kind of pressed in deal. And you don't have to do it, it just makes it easier for me. Easier for me when I weld it so I can get, you know, a nice clean weld. So this is going to go on here like so. And you're just going to weld that with some... You only have to fully weld and you can do some tack welds if you want, if you're confident in your welds, but me, overkill is the name of the game, so that's how I do it. So anyway, you snip one in like this and we're gonna go down about with the connection tip, you don't really don't need one, so go down about two inches from the top and cut that. And the vice really helps with this. Make sure your cuts are straight. Again, you don't need straight cuts, you don't need Super, you know, precise, whatever for this. Fish ain't gonna care, but I'm kind of OCD, and I just like to. So take your hand, hand grinder with a cutting disc on it. Word of advice: when you get cutting discs, get some good ones. Don't get the cheap ones from Harbor Freight because they just end up freaking tearing up on you after three cuts. So. And cut that down should be about two and a half inches long and you know I, I'd clean the tip up that's just me you don't have to but this is gonna slip over the top and now you're gonna want the coupler now the coupler uh, you want each pipe to be in about halfway so I mean each pole to be in this halfway so um, it can be anywhere from uh, two to ten inches long if you want me personally for, uh, these catfish poles I'm finding that four inches four inches give you just about everything you want so lock it in here also help to have a sharpie Jesus Christ these people are loud cut out four inch net. And 
there you go and you want to clean these burrs up a little bit Cleaning them up just helps them go slide in better, doesn't scar up your material as bad. And um, if you can, actually, what I like to do is I like to go around the edges and just kind of ream them down a little bit. And it's just easier on the hands. I've been cut a few times messing with these um, because I didn't go around them good enough. So, just a little pro tip. So, anyway, that's what you're going to want for your connection pieces. Pretty easy, pretty simple. That's all you need for that. Now, as for your poles, uh, you're going to have two poles, six feet, four feet, whatever. I'm using four footers because that's all I found, half inch. One of your poles is going to have a tip. One of your poles isn't going to have a tip. So you're going to select one of your poles. doesn't really matter which one. And cut the tip off. Now, the cleanest, easiest way i found to do this is to just do it with your uh, angle grinder. So, lock the device, and just try and cut it, try and take off as least material as you can. And also, I highly advise you wear a mask or some type of breathing protection when you do this because when you cut it, the little sawdust things just go everywhere and it's very irritating to get in your mouth so I have a neck gaiter I just put over my face and I'm gonna come to the upwind side and cut it so so the wind is blowing that way so just making sure this is still filming but since it's blowing that way I'm gonna cut so the wind takes it that way so turn it on there you go quick and painless and this is going to be your top and then the one with the pointy bit on it that's going to be your bottom that's that's going to be what you drive into the bank so just unlock this and we can go to our next step which is pretty freaking simple well actually since we're still here we can go ahead and um, do our welding piece so this is what we're welding I'm just gonna lock this in. Tip side up. Take my grinder, just clean it up a little bit on top. Try and get more even of a well, you know. Try and get it more even. Zoom in a little bit so you guys see what I'm doing here. And there we go. So, take a lock washer. Uh, make sure you plug in your welder here. And again, this isn't the only way you can do it. You can do it multiple ways. I'll try to show you some of the different ways I've done this but this is just what I found works pretty good and I'm just gonna pinch it with my electro doohickey what you call it So, this is basically what we come up with. I just went and welded it real quick. I didn't really want to get on the camera because 
doggone welding flash messes up my camera and it just messes with the what you call it uh, the focusing so anyway this is our connection chip and this is our coupler and for now we're just at the anvil they're gonna be tying some knots real quick other than that it's uh, pretty simple okay everybody now here's the super duper easy part you're gonna want to take your uh, poles Go ahead and take the pole that you're going to stick in the bottom. Uh, that's going to be your pole with the pointed end. Go ahead and take your coupler here. That's that's this piece. I'm going to go ahead and just slip it on there. And as you see, it's taking a little material. That's okay. That just shows it's on there good. And we're going to try to slip it in halfway up the pipe. Sorry, I had to get in the sun to see where it was, but it's about right here. You want about that much in there. So once you get it in there, lay it on your anvil and take yourself a hammer. Get your good hammer, and you don't want to hit that part of it. And when I say hit, I don't mean no little little love tap. Little no. That's gonna come up. Don't hit it too hard, cause then you might break the fiberglass. But gonna come up. Whack it a few times. Turn it. Whack a few times. And what that's doing is crimping this pipe to the pole. And you're not getting that off. You are not getting this off unless you have, I don't know, like you clamp this thing in a super vise and pull it with an 18 wheeler. It is not coming out with no fish. It just ain't if you do it right. So then you take the other side and you insert either end, doesn't really matter. Insert that in. Into the pole as well, into the pipe as well. Insert that into the pole, into the pipe, all the way down. And I've been told you might want to lock tight it, you might want to uh, JB weld it. If it makes you more comfortable, please do it. This is just the way I'm doing it. So, insert it all the way till it bumps the other one. And now we're just going to go down it, making sure all it's all locked in. And there you go. You have officially created yourself an eight foot, eight foot long um, bank pole, and it's plenty strong. It's plenty strong. Now, if you did the connection tip, again, you don't have to do it. You can just drill a hole through this, wrap your line around it. There's a lot of ways you can do it, but I do the connection tip. Slip that on, and again, this is why you want to kind of clean your edges up a little bit. Slip that on all the way. We're gonna lay it on here and do the exact same thing. And there you go. That is not coming off. That's your connection tip. So, got that part done. Now we move to the actual, you know, the actual line. So I'm gonna show you how to actually make the line part. I start off with this you know, portion of it. What you're going to want to do is uh, take a pool noodle here, take your knife and cut about a, I don't know, five to six inch section of it, you know, you need to be real long. Pool noodle. Take your knife and then you just cut a slit down one side like that. That's all you do with the pool noodle. Real simple. Got that part done. Now you take your line, whatever it may be, spider wire, Bank line, cotton string, pixie hair, and unicorn, and infuser unicorn farts. Doesn't matter. Use whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm using number nine uh, nylon bonnet twine. I already have it from my net making, and for what I'm using it for, I absolutely love it. It's pretty abrasion resistant, holds a good knot because it's bonded or whatever. Uh, I get it from the fishnet company. Yeah. Dog, there goes the pool noodle. Cut another one, but as I cut another one, um, I get it from the fishnet company. One roll is about a one pound roll. This is a one pound, is here a one or a half pound roll for 13? I think it's like 13 49 or something around that area. It's no more than 20 dollars roll. You get about roughly around 1500 feet or more, probably 2000, something like that. Of this, this is high quality line. This isn't this little 
made in China stuff. This is high quality line. You get a lot of it and it lasts you super long time. So I would highly advise going to the fishnet company, getting something like this, or Memphis Net and Twine, Jane's Net Craft Sales, something similar to it. Just whatever you you know. Whatever you want. So enough of my babbling about that. Anyway, you're gonna take your line, measure out however many feet you want on your bank pole. For my bank poles, I'm usually working about five to six feet because a lot of the banks I, a lot of the banks I work are actually pretty steep. So when I stick it in, I want to have an extra like three feet till it actually gets into the water, and then I'm gonna want some more feet to actually get down to the level. So take what you want, cut it, cut it however long you want. Doesn't really matter. And this is where the snap swivels come in. Snap swivel goes on top. Just take it. Again, you don't have to use a snap swivel if you don't want to. I do because it works for me. Take your snap swivel. Tie it on top. I'm going to show you how the snap, snap uh, swivel works. Uh, with your line connection point here. Make sure you all see what I'm doing here. Your line connection point. Take your snap swivel. Put your snap swivel through the connection point. Close it. No tying knots, no untying knots. All you do is snap, snap and unsnap. Super duper fast. You can have these unsnapped so when you get to the bank, all you do is just, you know, slide them on and then you snap them. Doesn't, again, doesn't matter whatever you want to do. Pull that back some. And you can have a snap swivel on the bottom too if you want. I just haven't found it very useful for my needs. So, then you take a weight. You can do a weight if you want, weight if you don't want, whatever your standard preference is. I'm using a half ounce egg sinker. Again, these lines are just for about half pound, two and a half pound bullheads, some uh, smaller channel catfish. If I was using these for bigger catfish, I'll probably ramp up some bigger. If I was like fishing, I'm fishing cut bait, skipjack, but if I was like fishing goldfish or something, I would probably ramp up my gear. I'll just tie a knot like this so you can put a barrel swivel down here if you want. Don't matter. Um, and then I use whatever hook I'm going to use. And I've been experimenting. My hooks fell over here. Uh, I've been experimenting FYI with a bunch of different hooks. I've been um, trying out circle hooks of two different sizes. I'm using equal claw uh, three aughts. And I'm also using these Mustad uh, 2 watts along with some kale hooks, just some generic kale hooks. And I've been finding with these bull heads, I have yet to get a swallowed hook out of them. Just about all of them are right in the corner of the jaw with um, either an eagle claw or uh, I haven't really had the Mustads hit up yet. But with the eagle claws, I know for a fact they're catching. And the problem is, since they're bigger, I'm eyeing a lot of them. I'm catching them and I, I'm catching these fish for uh, stocking purposes. I, I know who, who stocks bullheads. I'll explain that on a, another video or whatever. But I'm going to be trying these little little ones. And this is 3 out. But 3 outs have been performing uh, fairly well for me. So that's what I've been using. So anyway, you take your hook of choice, whatever it may be. Kale hook, circle hook, treble hook. I don't know. Laser guided. Uh, J hook out something whatever use it and tie it on however you want snail uh, and, You know matter you can put a snap on there This is the way I'm doing it about a foot from the bottom here Then I come up back from the top a little bit go down about a foot from that swivel and I will take half a foot or a foot of this fluorescent flagging and I'll just tie it right there and a lot of times this will be at water level for me and if I'm fishing on the bank already and this is across the bank from me I can see if this goes in the water I know I have a big fish if it's bouncing around I know something's messing with my bait and I might want to go check it um, and if it's just sitting high and dry you know next day I probably don't have anything at all so and we take all this, and this is where the noodle comes into play. Take our noodle. We find that slit. 
feet are swivel through the hole. Uh, pull your line through the slit. That keeps it. Just wrap your whole little line on here. Hook your line into your pool noodle. And this, you can slide it on. The way I do it is I just slide them onto my poles when they're in the truck. It's sitting kind of funny. But anyway, I will slide them on my poles when they're in the truck and they just sit like that. Or you can put them in a milk crate. Uh, you can have these organized, as I said. Um, you can have like a white, you can have white flagging for like an eight foot depth. Or um, you can have blue flagging for a five foot. Or you can have uh, pink flagging for, uh, if you pre bait all your stuff, you can have pink flagging for skipjack. Uh purple flagging for you know etc etc there's a lot of different ways you can vary this but these don't take up much space um they can't get hooked to each other so you can't can't hang them um if they fall out the boat if you're fishing from a boat they your pool noodles they float so you know you're gonna have to scramble out you know be scrambling around to get them but you're not gonna lose any gear unless these come unhooked and they fall in the water or whatever but then that's only a dollar so there you go so um that's basically the system in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to show some different hook connection points, but that's basically what we got. So I'm just going to show you real quick how we do this. And I got some set down by the creek. And just got a GoPro today, guys. So um, I'm going to see if I can work that GoPro half decently. So I'm going to show you real quick how um, these work in the yard and be done with it. Okay, so here's the pole. And I'm not sure y'all guys can, sure can see me here. Here's the pole, eight foot pole now. And basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna go up to the bank, you're gonna shove it in at an angle, and shove it in as deep as you can, but you want it at an angle. So I like mine being about two feet in at about 30 degree angle. So you're gonna, this is my yard, my yard is real, real. Hard, so we're going to try to shove them in here. You're going to shove them in, and depending on how you have your pool noodle set up, your pool noodle will be like that. Shove it in, slip your pool noodle off, and hopefully, you guys can see me here. I'm going to slip your pool noodle off, take your hook, get your pool noodle unravel. If you already have these pre baited just throw this in the water. Take a pool noodle, flip it over the top, send it down, snap. There you go. And the main principle of this is it works like a big shock spring. You're going to take it in a way, if you're using like J hooks, it's kind of, it's actually kind of sets the hook. Because it lets them go for it, you know, go down a little bit with very little resistance. But the minute he hits it, it's going to pull back on them and it's going to set that hook pretty well. It works pretty well with these circle hooks. From what I've been seeing, I've actually just sat on the bank and watched them. So, and as you see, this is... I'm pulling pretty hard here and it's not breaking, so... And if you put it in at the right angle, they're not going to break it, so... I'm definitely not saying a big fish can't break it. If you get like a big 90 pound flathead on here... Mm, he might be able to, but that's how you work it. And when you come up to pick him up, unsnap it. This is from if you're from a boat or the bank, you can pull out if you're in the bank. But unsnap it, unslit, feed line through. Wrap it, hook it, and put it in your milk jug or just slip it back down the pole. Pull the pole and be on your merry way. So, that's the way I'm doing it. That's the way it's been working for me. And, I got a couple of them made. So, Got that done. We're finna go over here. I'm finna show you some more connection points I figured out.
Okay, guys, I want to show you this one right here. Uh, this is actually going to be a connection point, and it's going to be a prototype of one I've done before. So, let me undo this one. Anyway, this is also a composite, but I call this one the shorty. And the way, I forgot what I call it. It was either shorty or like the waiter or something like that. Anyway, the way this one works is a standard four foot one, didn't lengthen or anything. I came up here, got a piece of that pipe, smash it on. I got some number nine needle wire. Uh, I use it for trapping or whatever. Number nine needle wire, did a wrap, came up, made an eye. I slipped a, it's like a number 12 swivel on here. I got my trap tag right there. Uh, did no wrap, loaded it, loaded it. Came out here, made an arm, made an eye, tied a line with a paper clip, well, not a clothespin, and then I had my hook hanging from the clothespin. And the way this would work would be this is for the ponds that I can actually kind of wade in a little bit, and the catfish will come around more during the night. This is for shallow water. The way this would work is I would be using usually live bait like a small bluegill or something way down to the water where it's about three feet and put this in you you know straight up and down and then by using this clip I would adjust the depth if I want the bluegill to be you know at the surface swimming around making a lot of noise or have them lower and this will hold that bluegill until old Mr. Catfish comes or Mr. Bass or whatever comes and snatches it. Well, it doesn't work like that, but put that back in. Put that back in. Anyway. Anyway, when he will snatch it, it will release from this. And this is just an arm, that's all it is. It's just an extension. And then he will just be fighting that actual pole. So, and then I have this barrel swivel right here, and that's for the um, swiveling action, of course. But this is another way you can do it. I have a few poles set up like this because I converted them to long ones from these um, waders. And you can hook it up like this if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, you can also just tie it around and do half hitches. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it, so. Uh, now you guys have seen everything, uh, I got my GoPro and we're going to try to head down to the creek and see if we can actually get something getting caught on camera, be it a turtle or whatever. Hey, okay, so the line's going into this bush right here. Can't see anything from here. Oh, catfish. Oh, something got on him. This line is uh, nothing. Wait, what the hell? I ain't got a hook on here anymore. The f that shit is cut clean off. What in the hell? See what the turtle trap has. Oh, two sliders. This one actually got wedged in the in the webbing here. Hey, buddy. What's your name? Sorry, guys. They love that skipjack. Fishing underneath a bridge. People don't even notice you, man. I'm serious. These guys go unharmed. Alright, y'all. Don't mess with my lines, man.